Well, hello and welcome back to another Motivational Monday on See Here Love. And we're so glad you've joined us around the kitchen table, either online or on your TV screen. And I love that Cheryl, Dran, and Abby are here with me today. Yeah, ladies. So yeah, good. The gang's all here. It is. I love when we're all together because yeah, there's so too. much yeah. great information and things that you guys bring. And I know this topic is going to be very convicting, especially to me personally. <laughs> oh. And I know that our conversation today is going to be helpful as well to me. So convicting and helpful yeah. to me. And I know the hundreds of thousands of viewers that watch us. So we've got to be honest about yeah. this because the topic today is life balance and priorities. Oh. Oh. So today we're going to be talking about, from our own personal experiences, mm. scripture that's going to help us discern and encourage us in our priorities and life balance. And so we're going to be looking at the scripture verses from Luke 12, 29 to 31, Matthew 6, 33, and Matthew 22, 37 to 38. Mm. But before we get to that, I want to ask you this very honest question. Okay. Um, from one to ten, one being the least and ten being the most, the most healthy, mm. where would you rate yourself as far as life balance and priorities? One being the least, ten being just the best. Mm. And be honest, because I'm I'm willing to be honest as well. One to ten. <laughs> Cheryl. Oh. <laughs> oh Lord, you couldn't make me second. <laughs> oh man. Um Cheryl pre-2017 was probably a five, four and a half to five. Okay. Um, but something happened to me this year. I grew up a little bit. Okay. I, I adulted a bit more. Oh, okay. okay. Congratulations. Good. And? <laughs> Congratulations, you've adulted. You are now officially an adult, Cheryl. Welcome. <laughs> So uh, I'd say I'm a I'm about a seven, healthy seven. Okay, so yeah. four and a half to lots, five last still year. Still lots of room to improve. Yeah. Seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, Abby. Um, I fluctuate. Okay. Between, like right in the middle, <laughs> I probably am a four or a three until I crash and burn out, and then I become an eight, and I'm oh. really good, <laughs> and then it kind of slows down and goes back. Okay, so you're at on average. Right. On average, I'll say a f six. Okay. I'll be nice. Six out six. of ten. Ish. Hmm. Okay, Joanna. You said to be really honest. No, right? exactly. That's yeah. good. So, Joanna, I think it's tricky. Like, we're, it's a number that's subjective mm -hmm. that you're asking us to make based on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, I think other people would look at me and give me a solid eight. Mm -hmm. I think I'd give myself a five. Hmm. Wow. Why that discrepancy? That's pretty significant. I think that's because three. people don't see my life. I don't mean in some yeah. secretive way, but yeah. like they're not like with me with every food choice I'm making. They're not with me with every choice I'm making with how to use my spare time. Yeah. They're not, you know, mm -hmm. like, so like I'm much more aware of that than, than right. other people. So I'm tougher on myself, I would mm -hmm. say. Right. If I was going to be honest, and if I asked Chris this question, <laughs> I, I would honestly say probably a five. Uh, mm. Five, maybe six. I think when you are more entrepreneurial and you launch into something, everything goes out of whack and you give right. yourself grace. But I think I'm past the grace period. Mm. And that's why the show is really important to me because mm. you might as well do this in the safety of people who you trust to really yeah. work and struggle yeah. through this yeah. because it's, right. I know it's about choices. So that's to Chris, my husband, a shout out to him because <laughs> essentially he said, you better be honest because right. I don't want you saying, oh, I'm a good solid nine and a half <laughs> right. um, because he would probably be calling on the phone right now right. saying you're wrong. Yeah. Anyway, so that's good. So basically we're at five, eight, five, six, six, six. seven. Yeah. Only, uh, only this year, seven. Right. right. So, so on that, why are we not able to say that mm -hmm. we're a good nine, ten. Maybe we never hit ten, but even like a good solid nine, mm. eight, oh. nine. Like, how come? I, I, I could do this without even thinking or blinking. So, uh, I love what Joanna said. I'll piggyback her. If, if anyone was to look at my life, Cheryl Nemhard's life, they'd say, oh, nine and a half, because I push stuff out, mm. always producing at a high level. Production is not balance, mm. and it doesn't matter what I'm pushing out. It's I love that it's what's happening. So for me, my enemy is procrastination. Mm. Procrastination is my thing, mm. um, and so it throws a lot of things off whack because I leave things to the last minute. Then I'm in this vortex of stress mm. and uh, worry, and mm. I push things out. And mind you, like God is. 
full of grace and it's like, oh wow, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, girl, I just, you know, yeah. like I'm in the car heading. Mm -hmm. I just don't, I, I haven't, I need to really, mm -hmm. I sabotage myself when mm -hmm. I do that. Um, and so my husband and my, my kids say this, you get no points, mom. Because mm -hmm. they'll, wow. they'll sit there and people will be blown away and they're like, I go, what do you guys think? It was, everyone loved it. You get no points because, my, as they'll say, what would you have been like? What could God have done had you prepared? Wow, wow. that's even big. More? Hmm. That's some good accountability. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Wow. They're, my, they're my truth. Yeah, uh, no, that's good. Right. Abby, what about you? So you're six, you say? Yeah. And how come? Um, and you know, I, I mean, I think I say that because I, I'm on this wheel of constantly learning this, um, where I say yes to everything I take on so much because, mm. and this is something I've learned, and I actually wrote a blog post on it that I'll probably share, and it was about coming out of burnout. Um, mm. But it was because I'm, a, I'm afraid to lose any opportunity. Mm. And the reason I'm afraid is because I don't think or I don't trust that God will get me to where he wants me to be if I don't take every opportunity. Wow. Oh, that's so a big I one. do huh. wow. and then I don't do anything well. Yeah. yeah. And then I wow. burn out and then and then I go to the extreme where I'm like I need this and I need this and I need this and I really do take care of myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm actually I am in a good balance season now, but I also as we've been talking, part of me is like I think I need to kind of research my priorities mm -hmm. and like are they priorities other people are projecting mm -hmm. on me mm -hmm. that they think should be my priorities mm -hmm. or are they my priorities yeah. and so if I'm being honest I actually think I'm pouring into my priorities now well yeah. so um, but I'm also taking care of myself and I yeah. yeah and for me it's also just starting the day with the Lord and funny how when you take that extra time I seem to be more productive the rest of the time. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think when I'm looking at life balance and priorities, you're looking at, you know, your relationship with God, you know, your family, um, you know, your friends, and then work, volunteer, whatever extracurricular. So you're looking at all these sort of pockets that you have. Right. So when I look at that, you know, you kind of get this bird's eye view of like, oh, where is my time being spent mostly? And I think why I would say I'm a five, and yes, there is that part, like I said, the entrepreneurial thing of launching something, but there's also this Thing. And I don't know if it's a missionary kid, pastor's kid, performance thing, but there is where, especially in ministry, you do it for the Lord and mm. it's about souls and lives and the story mm. and to get people to know him. And there is this, it's, there's this drive and push, but that can also be bad mm. if it's impeding and hurting time spent in relationship with your family right. and cultivating a, a good community within your church. Mm -hmm. And so I, I honestly am I'm working that out because I, you know, there are people that will say, you know, it's because it's all about God, then you push and you do it and you put all of it in. But there's ramifications and consequences for that because you can do that and lose all relationship mm -hmm. with yeah. the people that are closest to you and that love you and trust you. Yeah. And so I will be honest, like there's been a challenge if I'm honest, Chris wouldn't say this, but I haven't spent that time in family, even being like newly married, where I have carved out and been intentional with the time spent with him because I'm mm -hmm. so focused on production and mm -hmm. output and, and all for God. Mm -hmm. And some people actually I know would say, good for you, because that's priority important. But then when I look at this new family I have, that's a pretty big priority mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm not putting my time and efforts to. And so um, it's been good conversation. It's been full of emotion because it's it's hard to look and say, I've been choosing this and not you. Mm -hmm. And when you have somebody that can give you that feedback back, it's it's hard, mm -hmm. but it's important. Because right. I know he loves me enough to tell me that. Because yeah. he could say, oh, honey, go, go. I just want you to be happy and do it. Yeah. And he's not getting what he needs as a, as a husband yeah. in a relationship, right? Yeah. right? So yeah. it's a it's a close one to me right mm -hmm. now. You know, mm -hmm. it really is because I need to make some healthy decisions towards right. that. Yeah. You know what, um, I, I, very transparently, when I said that I, I only this year I kind of bumped up a point or two, uh, I restructured my thinking with this thought. I, I, hit, I gave myself a truth pill. Just because you are good at something, Cheryl, yes, you have talent. Who cares? Because you're good at something doesn't mean you're called to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always measured that if I, if I was succeeding or, or having some measured... Um, growth in an area then God must be in it this must be what he's called me to do yeah. and then you find yourself mm -hmm. like you said Stretched just oh. 
Right. Yeah. Um, and so you've you've got to just sort of it's it's really important to sort of ask and seek, like what is that sh that divine thing you've called me to? That right. passion, those mm -hmm. those specific things, or else you can get betrayed by that. That's I'm just saying that's not the yeah. measuring yeah. point. It, don't yeah. look at the at yeah. how well yeah. you do something. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. There Join was a, um, a minister who came to do, he guest preached at my church this summer, and his name is Sundar Krishnan, and he was speaking mm -hmm. about prayer, and he was very convicting to me because he, in, in his message, he was giving sort of a, an approach to how to pray in your daily life. Yeah. And it was very inspiring and practical, but he said, most of you, you say the reason you don't pray is because you lack discipline. You lack discipline. Oh, you're just not organized mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. And he says, that's stop lying. The reason you don't pray is not discipline, it's desire. Mm. Wow. And mm. it struck me because he says, because here, like me and a thousand YouTube videos and books and resources mm. online are going to give you a tool, a, mm. a discipline that you can take on to practice prayer. This is one, he's like, I'll share one way that works, but whether that's a discipline in how we eat, yeah. it's a discipline in... Um, our, our relational stuff like you're talking mm -hmm. about in your marriages or disciplines around uh, our health or mm -hmm. disciplines around our work. He's like, there's lots of disciplines that you can find. The world is full of people who want to suggest how to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he says, but you lack the desire and until you desire it, you won't, you know, it wow. won't change. And it's yeah. the same like, oh, you know, like, well, the reason I, you know, I'm by nature more mm -hmm. free spirited. Oh, the reason like my prayer and private devotional life is not consistent is because I'm just like a free-spirited person. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you don't, ha you don't desire me. Mm. That's a bit. Ouch. Wow. Yeah. And I think it's important. I think these things to hear because it's actually really convicting me because it's like, you know, I haven't spent the time in prayer that I, I should because again, I'm like, I'm doing ministry work. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, what, that makes no sense. How can you do ministry work if it's not like on fund out and, you know, foundational things like prayer? But it's, a, it's an amazing thing. When you get into the, this world, and I speak, you know, for people who understand this whole Christian world or bubble, you can start making up stuff that mm. become truths. Right. And then you need a, like, a reality check to say that, mm. you know, that's actually, you're not desiring it. You're right. just doing yeah. this out of your own sort of selfish ambition, even yeah. within the Christian world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's key. Yeah. One of the things I, I want to do now is look at scripture verses. Because I think we can say, yeah. absolutely, family is important. And absolutely, God is important. But let's look at some scripture verses that sort of ground us. And what are, what's being said here about priorities and how we are to live? So we, we're going to start off with Luke 12, 29 to 31. Yeah, it's just uh, pulling up here. Yeah. Luke 12. It's um, yeah, thinking about it. 20, 20, 20, 20, 29 to 31. Yeah. Okay. And it says... Jesus speaking, and don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your Father already knows what you need. Yeah. Mm. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and He will give you everything you need. Yeah. Okay, well, let's just sit on that for a second. Mm. Seek, seek mm. the kingdom of God above all else, and He will give you everything you need. What does that mean to you? Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And then it says, he'll give you yeah. all that you need. And let me read the next verse because okay, yeah. I think it's important. Don't be afraid, little flock, little sheep, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Mm. Great. Wow. It is his joy. Mm. So don't be afraid. He wants to give you the kingdom of God. Wow. Oh. That's good. What, I, is, what, what is that I think that's, mean to you? that's trust. Like it's, um, yeah, a seeking, it's, it's, putting the trust in God first and seeking his glory first in everything. And I think from there, he leads you, he leads your steps. And so um, as long as your, your spirit, your soul is balanced and right with God, then he directs everything else. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, naturally, you find the balance because you find what you're putting your time into is is where you're supposed to be putting your time into. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's a filter for me. It's a filter like I need to see things through my relationship with the Lord and through His eyes and how He wants me to see things. Is yeah. it frivolous, what I'm yeah. putting my time into? Is, mm -hmm. it, is it for self-gain? Yeah. Or, yeah. Good. Cheryl? Uh, I, you know, sw I just switch the, the lens. I take it off of me and I put it towards what is it that pleases you? What is it that, that, that brings you glory? What is it that um, touches 
my brother and my neighbor and, and, and lifts them up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's outward stuff as opposed mm -hmm. to like what's good for me, what, what do I need, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, to me, that's what seeking the kingdom is. Yeah. Joe, what do you think? Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm like, I know. You know, I'm, it's, it's, I think, it's, it's I, I think I'll have to blog about it. I'm yeah. sort of processing it, so I'd, I, I won't say any more at this yeah. point. I, I think it'll be just more noise. Okay. <laughs> um, let's look at Matthew 6, 33. That's another one where we're looking at um, balance and, and priorities. Yeah, it, it essentially uh, reiterates this here. Mm -hmm. um, you know what, I'm going to read a <laughs> two verses before that. So Matthew 6, 31 to 33. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. So, yeah, and I think that it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of saying the same thing in a little bit different words. But don't worry about what you'll eat and what you'll drink, what you'll wear. Oh. Like focusing on that. Again, for me, it's trust. It's trusting that if I seek God first in everything I do yeah. for His mm -hmm. glory, yeah. that everything else is going to fall into place. And that's a really hard yeah. one for oh, us. It's scary. It's yeah, a control really thing. It's scary. like, wait a second, what do you mean? You know. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I when I listen to stories of my dad and even you know his missionary family, mm -hmm. over and over again, the beauty of the stories of people who had nothing, mm -hmm. who were persecuted, who were in jail, mm -hmm. and over and over, those stories of saying it's only God because mm -hmm. it was we got a check in the mail, we got people coming and saying, I think you need food. We, mm -hmm. It was miracle after yeah. miracle. And yeah. I will say this, sometimes, you know, I miss that being in North America because mm -hmm. we have so much access to things right. that can help us and, and fill those needs. Mm -hmm. Whereas in, in other parts of the world where they don't have that, mm -hmm. it is complete reliance on God. Yeah. It is like, God will provide. And you're like, yeah. how can you say that for sure? Yeah. No, yeah. he will because he has. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, we needed food. This happened. Our banana tree bloomed when it shouldn't have, and yeah. then bananas came. Right. like, oh, well, that would have been bananas just, yeah. nope, nope. It would never happen that month. And like, yeah. and when you sit and wonder of it, you go, that's when God, it's like he does his best. When, those, yeah. when people who trust him, Whole he heart, can be like, yeah. watch yeah. me do my thing can and I, provide for you. Can right? I say, like, I'm, I've been challenged in this very recently. Um, where the practical thing is to, so I have been looking for a job um, to follow a contract that's finishing and the Lord's been, has challenged me. A job kind of came my way and he just said, just wait. And the only reason I know that is because I, I sat with him and I, I, I prayed and I really felt it on my spirit. Just wait, just make space. And I think for me, it was because I have been going so hard for so long from job to job to job and I've been striving on my own. And I kind of got to this place where I was like, I don't want to just keep going. Mm, yeah. I, I want what he has for yeah, me, yeah. but I, I'm too busy to allow space mm, for it. Yeah. So Thank now you. I'm in this, I'm about to embark on a journey and I'm going to blog my way through it and watch as he provides along the way. Great. I'm, yeah, it's pretty exciting. But yeah. I think that's a challenge for us in the whole balance is we need to allow space for God to work. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cheryl, you yeah. have Matthew 22, yeah. 37 to 38. Yeah. I'll just read it. Mm -hmm. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm -hmm. all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Put that one in there because when we're looking at priorities and focus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say that one sometimes comes number 10 in Melinda's <laughs> yes. world. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. yeah, let's yeah, talk about that difficult. because it, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, here we are, we're like, we're women of faith, yeah. women who follow Jesus. First and greatest. First and greatest. Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, right. oh, and, and I, when I read that one, you know, I was preparing, I'm like, oh God, because I really, if I was honest, I was like, you're kind of, it's kind of down here. And I'm doing a show on priorities and life balance, a Christian show, and I've got you down here. Which makes no sense. It's it's so, so upside down because yeah. every opportunity, everything that comes our way, every good and blessed thing comes from God. Right. Mm -hmm. So the job, the ministry, the opportunities, the, the, the platforms, it's all from God. I know. So how can we uh, push him to the side and don't have time for you? I'm going to... I'm going to go do these things <laughs> yeah, go for, do these things for you. Exactly. Yeah. Right. How crazy is that? Yeah. But to go do stuff for you and yet not really love you or desire you in yeah. the way that you're asking in the first command, the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then I go out and do, and do yeah. my thing. There yeah. are moments, you know, and, and like I said, that's why this is so convicting. So I'm like, man, I, I've got to reprioritize some things in my life. Mm -hmm. Why is this so hard, though? I mean, 
for this one? Why is this one kind of, we're all like, when we read it, we're all like, ugh. Yeah. I, I think of a time in my life where I was a full-time student studying at a, doing my master's in a seminary, and I was working as well at the same time. And I found it much easier to do the work stuff than the school stuff because work was emailing and calling and, you know, poke, 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 you got to do the thing, mm -hmm. when's the thing coming? And on the school side, it was like, here's your syllabus, <laughs> here's what you need to do for the whole term, and then it's quiet. Mm -hmm. And like you go to class, but the the work and assignments, no one's calling you, right. no one's no one's bugging you about them. It's right. a self discipline yeah. to get that work mm -hmm. done, and so it's easy to get distracted from the important work I was doing and left my full time work to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, but this part time job could crowd easily into my whole world right. because it was making a lot of noise, mm -hmm. and not in a negative yeah. way, just the nature of work. It makes noise, and the study was quiet and personal discipline mm -hmm. right. and there's two things do this term and we're not going to talk to you about them just just we expect that they'll be handed in mm -hmm. and so it's easy to have that be crowded out by the noisy thing and the noisy yeah. thing yeah. was good it was yeah. a christian job yeah. <laughs> it was cr church work yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's easy for that to crowd over the thing yeah. i said was my priority at that time and so in the same way with god i'm trying to say yeah. right. but there's these noisy things in life yeah. Yes, <laughs> that, yeah. that yeah. Yeah. crowd out what we actually say right. is the most important thing. Yeah. For me, it was, a, it was a visibility, very quickly, visibility and faith issue. Um, I can see and touch and measure success over here, mm. right? So right. I can see, I, I'm, I'm doing the work of God and I can see the hearts change and I can measure yeah. it. Mm. And I think you asked, like, why is it so hard to just love and honor mm. and with our mm -hmm. heart, soul, and mind? Mm -hmm. Because, be, you know, it's, it's, it's the thing, you know, yeah. how can you, how can you love someone that you see, but not love someone that you, you right. know, yeah. so it's, it's a challenge where it is. how it's, it's faith. Yeah. It's it knowing is. that it he is. is a very present help. He is, right. as, yeah. he is as present yeah. as the ministry in front of you. And I'll be honest. I think some of the reason why I don't sit and listen about to him about priorities is because I don't want to hear what he has to say. Right. Cause what if he says, Melinda, give up all your speaking and just hang out with your family. Mm. Well, wow. what, what? Mm. like, mm. Melinda, what if finish the show and do nothing and, and just um, mm. love your family? Yeah. Like, yeah. what? And, and so then, it, I mean, I'm, I love my family, but here's the thing. I think, you know, after this show, I'm going to go back and kind of have a moment because yeah. that's important. Those are important questions. Right. Like, a lot of us, especially busy women, high-performing output, we don't give the space to go, okay, why am I choosing this? There's something mm, here. Yeah. Or why am I not wanting to talk to God? Because I think deep down I know what he's going to say, mm. and I don't want to be confronted mm. with it because it means that I have to make a, a decision. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, but then you go back to then what's your desire? Right. Yeah. What's your motivation? What's your love? And so it is an ongoing process. Yeah. It is something that I have to work hard mm. every yeah. day to do. Yeah, and it's just as it said in the verse that I read, it's why I continued it, the seek first God, of kingdom of God above all else, and he'll mm -hmm. give you everything you need. But, so don't be afraid, mm. right. little flock, for right. it gives him great happiness. Mm. Your father is greatly joyful yeah. about giving you the wow. kingdom. I know. Don't and be afraid. So don't be afraid, it's, it's a fear right? thing. Yeah. It may be, and then I think right. it is a fear oh, thing. Oh, he's going to take this away. Yeah, and then yet, but what if, what if he does, he'll replace it with something yeah. right. even greater. Well, and right? do you know, Mel, as you were saying that, like one of the other things, like, yes, success and productivity, but we find our identity in that. Mm -hmm. So is it, if, if he takes away the show or you're speaking, your identity, yeah. then where is I? it? And I think, where is I it? think that a lot of women, I, I got to yeah. say when I talk to women, <laughs> It is that we've we found right. our identity in the things that yeah. we do, absolutely. in the labels totally. that we have, absolutely. and, and what we, the output. Yeah. Idols. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And oh, so, I heard this the other day, an idol is anything you have to check with before you go to God, or before you hear from God. Mm -hmm. That was okay, a hard one. An idol, an is, idol anything is anything you have to check with before you, you hear from God, or listen hmm. to God. So oh, if you hear hmm. the small, quiet voice, but you're like, oh, but, paycheck, oh, but, mm -hmm. boyfriend, oh, but. Yeah. So oh. on that, because we have like <laughs> a few minutes left on the show, I, I want maybe it's some accountability. But mm. what are we going to do in our own lives mm. going <sighs> forward after this deep discussion? Because I can see us all going. Oh. This is like group therapy yeah. now. <laughs> what are we going to do? And, and and do our best to commit to as mm. as we look at our fives and sixes and try to move those up to sevens and eights or or a right. bit higher. 
what, what can we do? Because I want to encourage ourselves and our viewers who mm -hmm. are journeying with us who are probably saying, I'm right with them. What are we going to do? Okay, for me, I'm going to do something that I never thought was spiritual and quite carnal, and I left it to the end of my, of my list, but it's health for me. Mm, okay. It's health for me, and I, that came out of uh, Julie Black's show. Um, and, and funny enough, I tagged on what uh, Joanna had said in that show. If you don't have your health, you have nothing. Right. And all the things that I'm working to build and branding mm. and all of these wonderful things mean nothing if I'm not there. Mm. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so uh, I need to work on that. I think it's so important. Sleep, hydration. Mm -hmm. Like we, we as Christians, we just ah. yeah, just keep going, yeah. going, running. They're not spiritual yeah. matters, yeah. It's but good. it's it's part of my personal balance. Yeah. So a priority for you in the next while will be health. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. We'll be asking you and both sleep. Sleep. And I sleep. put yeah. that under health because yeah. I don't sleep yeah. at all. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I know. Because we're gonna change we both, that. We both text at like email, two a.m. and emails. Text me at three a.m. I'll text you right back, honey. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Abby. Um, I am going to really start dwelling on what I want my priorities to be, and okay. list them out. Um, and in this next season I'm entering, I'm making space, and so okay. I'm. For me, it's really putting aside the practical thing that I think I should do and really listening and hearing from the Lord to where okay. he wants me to go. So, so making space. So making space. So health, making space to hear from God. Joanna? Um, related to a thing I'm doing this week in my life, I'm buying a condo this week. Okay. And in it's reflection, big. I recognize because I have been undisciplined, I could have done this five or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And now I'm financially not as well as I could be because I didn't do this five or eight years ago mm -hmm. so because I wasn't disciplined so enough. I didn't prioritize this part. I, I've, I've had a wonderful time mm -hmm. and now it's time to prioritize uh, a clearer budget okay. for my life. You're All right. A, you're adulting. So, yeah, you are adulting Congratulations. Too. So finances, <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. health, Making space, and I think for me it is, just like I would said, it's more uh, an intentional time with God, not to be afraid of what He may mm. say, yeah. but knowing that He loves His little flock, mm -hmm. which means He loves me enough that if, if I do hear then let it go, He'll replace it with something great wow. and not to worry. So that's mine. So yeah. here we go. Health, space, finances, desire to be with God. Mm. I think those are big, yeah. big things that we as as Now, if all love. four of us can be one person, <laughs> <laughs> super balanced. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> I know, we'd be the super woman, wonder oh, woman. Yeah. Oh, pretty big, pretty big theme. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I love when we can come together and trust one another with mm -hmm. these things that we're learning. And I think, you know, priorities and, and life choices are big. And it's, we're, we haven't arrived, as you can see, with our numbers, but we're going to get there. And I think it's great that we can kind of journey together. Yeah. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And to our, our wonderful viewers, I know that there are a few of you, or maybe many of you, that have been nodding your head going, mm-hmm, girl, <laughs> I get it. And Your so girl. we want to encourage you that, number one, for this show, if, it's some, if there's something resonating with you, please go on our website, seeherelove.com. Press, say hello, and talk to us. Write to mm -hmm. us. We'd love to pray for you to help you on your priority life balance journey. We're mm -hmm. learning too, so we're going to help you with our best advice. Second, if you know somebody who needs to hear the show, send it along. Send the link. Because I know that you know some girlfriends or your mama or somebody, a colleague, who you think that this would be a great show to help them as they look at life balance. Now, be wise. <laughs> <laughs> be gentle. Be a good girlfriend when you do that, okay? But this could be a really great show for some great conversation, even around a small group or a time we can play it on, you know, your big TV screen and, and talk about it too. We'd love to be a part of your conversation. Yeah. And don't forget that, you know, we're on Facebook, a Twitter, and Instagram, and so there's lots of information about us and what we're doing. So please join us in our journey as well. And also, don't forget that you are seen, heard, and deeply loved by us and loved by God. Bye-bye. Melinda's Hair by Paolo Marola. Melinda's Clothing sponsored by Denise Boutiques. Clothes for every woman. Shopdenise.ca.
Deeks Insurance is a proud sponsor of the See Here Love Studio.